Thermal traffic, King Air 7 Delta Charlie. We're uh, eight miles to the west, uh, 5600. I guess we're gonna overfly the field for 17 now, uh, thermal. You wanna talk about a busy, untowered airport? It's definitely the one we're about to visit today. This isn't our first time landing here, but it is our first time visiting. And I'll explain the difference shortly as we head to Jacklin Cochrane Regional Airport, otherwise commonly known as Thermal. So the first time we came, we cheated. I landed and just taxied back and departed and added it to the visited airports list. Now it is still our number 22 airport, but our friend Chuck told me something. It doesn't count until you land, park and explore the airport. He couldn't have been more right and we'll see why a little later. Located in the Coachella Valley, about 20 miles southeast of Palm Springs, Thermal Airport is non-towered and has two pretty decent sized runways, 1230 at 4,995 by 100 feet, and the one we landed on today, 1735 at 8,500 by 150 feet. Two things I'd like to mention. One, I did say it was untowered, but we have flown past here so many times and the amount of private jets departing here is crazy. To the point that SoCal is constantly telling those pilots that they have to call the 1-800 number to request their release from the airport. And that makes me think it could probably use a tower. Secondly, with as much traffic as comes into this airport, like today, that 8,500 foot runway makes a great short approach option if on downwind, especially when you have fast traffic right behind you like the King Air we had behind us today. And speaking of approaches, Thermal does have both an RNAV and a VOR instrument approach for runway 30 and 35. So as pilots, we know that as we climb, the air gets cooler. So imagine here in the middle of summer where you are not only at sea level, you are 114 feet below sea level. Yeah, it gets scorching into the 150 to 120 degree range. This is one of those airports we put off until summer was over because not only do you have to worry about the heat, but the winds can sustain 30 miles an hour and gusting 40 miles an hour, sometimes even higher. And with it being the desert, we've even heard dust storms on METARs, which we visually confirmed when transitioning the area. And before we even decided to hit the thermal, I literally checked if it was sustained calm winds for a couple of days before going. There is no transient parking at Thermo, which is important to remember because any spots you see are reserved for an FBO only, which they have three of. Atlantic Aviation and Desert Jet Center are the first two. Neither of these did we use for no other reason than we weren't spending the night. We opted for the third option, Thermal Aviation, and man, they were just amazing to deal with. I called 30 minutes before we arrived and they were just so professional on the phone. I have to call out our service guys, and I don't normally do this, but that's just how good they were. Alex and Carlos, I felt like they really enjoyed doing their jobs. Maybe it had something to do with both of them being pilots. We ended up seeing them literally help a local pilot tug a twin to the field station and return it to him just because they saw him about to pull it with a small tug. Seriously, a great FBO and a great bunch of guys. There were no service fees for a quick one hour stop. They have a pilot's lounge and restrooms. Oh, forgot the most important part. Self-service fuel is crazy cheap. So for comparison, 
In my airport of Corona, it was $6.29. Here, it was $5.06. Yeah, really cheap. As far as transportation, Thermal Aviation doesn't have courtesy cars, unfortunately, unlike the other FBOs. With those other FBOs being Atlantic and Desert Jet Center, you'll pay some service fees, but spending the night, those bigger FBOs do have car rentals. Just make sure to make reservations. It helps the FBO account for you, and it assures you'll have a vehicle waiting. We've seen what happens when there are no cars available, and it's no fun. There also isn't a cafe on the field, so if you want food options, you'll have to drive. Thermal is not really a well-known airport. I mean, not a lot of people talk about it, but not for lack of traffic. At first, I didn't know why it was so busy, but when you think about all the golf courses, resorts, country clubs, concerts, and sporting tournaments that happen here, it's no wonder. I don't golf. Occasionally, we'll spend a night or two at a resort, and I don't make country club money just yet. So maybe that's why I didn't know. But even if you just come in for a fuel stop, it's a really cool airport to visit. Just make sure to go in the cooler months. So remember how I said Chuck told us to explore the airport? Here's what I mean. Even just stopping to get fuel, you'll meet people. And even if it's just for a few minutes to share the love of aviation. I saw these guys in the Cirrus and I knew I had to talk to them about their plane. Learned one of the guys was a CFI, Tanner, and the other was a student building hours, Connor, with his friend's Cirrus. Yeah, obviously his very, very good friend. We talked about how Connor had flown 20 hours in four days. I mean, that's just nuts. And they were heading up north to Sacramento. We talked a little bit about the plane and how they loved it. I've said it before, I'm a hard, hard introvert, but my wife can attest. Put me around planes and I can pretty much talk to anyone. And about 90% of the time, it's an extremely amazing experience. As far as the other 10%, maybe we'll discuss that another time. So in summary, in the summer, it gets really windy and hot. There are two huge runways. There is a lot of private jet traffic. And even though there is no transient parking, there are three FBOs. Just wanted to show you guys where they ultimately parked us. It was really far, but at least they tugged us. Just kidding, it was quick. Thank you all again for your suggestions, your comments, feedback, and especially your personal stories. We seriously think it's amazing to read when you first discovered an airport or even just personal memories. We never expected that, but it's truly one of our favorite things to read in the comments. We'll see you guys next week. And until then, make sure you guys go fly, go discover.